Hello my fellow gardening gals and guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Serenity Now Garden. My name's Jeannie and I garden in central Minnesota in a zone 4B. So today it's just considered late, late spring, early summer. We're just in mid-June, so I'm gonna take you around my yard and I'm just gonna show you a few highlights in the garden, what's blooming right now or what looks really good. We added a lot of plants in the last year, so some of these plants are really new to me and I'll share them with you now, so stay tuned. If you like videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel or give me a thumbs up. Thank you, take care and happy gardening. Hi garden friends, so we're gonna start in the back here. This is my backyard. Now a little bit of history, if you didn't know, in January of 2022, we had a ton of buckthorn removed from this area. So all these garden beds are new. Everything from the aspen trees back was completely all buckthorn. We live in the wetlands here. So we're gonna keep it more natural, kind of restore the wetlands behind these aspen trees here. And yeah, I've just kind of been reclaiming our yard and planting it up here with a lot of clearance plants and it's going well so far. There's been a lot of growth just within the last year. So I'll just show you a few highlights here. There's not a ton blooming yet. We're kind of in between like the spring and the summer bloom cycles. I do have a cut flower and veggie garden back there as well, which I'll show later. But this bed here is my, what I call my purple and gold garden bed. So I love gold foliage. We have a lot of gold foliage plants and a lot of purple flowers. So the ajuga is just on its way out, but we have some things here that are starting. Look at this hosta. It's one of my only full sun hostas, but it does pretty well. It gets maybe a little crisp in August. This is a fragrant bouquet. And I just don't have the heart to move it. It's just gorgeous right there. And then right next to these Royal Candle Veronicas. So these are just about to bloom and they'll be a brilliant purple. Looks great next to that hosta have some gold lamium. That's the first year for that. I'm trying that as a ground cover here. And this bed has three Sutherland gold elderberries. Now I love elderberries and elderberries seem to really like this area. These can get eight to 10 feet tall and wide. I'll probably prune them more in like a tree form, but these are only you know, two years old, so they have a ways to go. This is a Siberian Kaboom Iris. It just looks great next to that gold foliage as well. I do have to spray these for deer though. So this is the Sutherland Gold. I mean, as you can see, the foliage is just so gorgeous. It almost looks like a Japanese maple from afar. I call it the poor man's Japanese maple. <laughs> Japanese maples don't do well in zone four in our zone, so there's some ajuga that's on its way out. That's the burgundy glow, but man, this put on a real show just a couple weeks ago. And this kind of marries the two, gold and purple. This is Sweet Kate Tritoscanthia, or spiderwort. This can spread a bit, but this is new first year, so you can see the gorgeous purple blooms and that gold foliage. I just love it. Can't wait till that fills in. I have more Royal Candle Veronica back there. We also have some pasta that I might end up moving or kind of just holding a place right now and some hibiscus and button bush in the back. This is a garden bath right here to my new cut flower and veggie garden. The cut flower and veggie garden just has dead leaves in it as a weed barrier and I lined it with zinnias and gomfrina that will grow in. So I'll show that in a subsequent video. This right here I have a lot of golds with spirea and we have some delphinium and liatris in the back. The delphinium is just starting to bloom 
This is a Rose Marvel Salvia. I just love this Salvia. It stays compact, but it looks really cool with like the two-toned color. Now, as soon as this is done, I'll shear it back and hopefully get a rebloom out of it. This is a candy corn spirea. It's a Proven Winners Double Play spirea. I just love it. Every few weeks, it looks different. This emerged from the ground in the spring, bright red. And now look at it. It's like char -choose. Now it's got, you know, some flowers or just starting. This is my earliest blooming delphinium. It also stays the shortest. Um, the delphiniums I just love. You have to stake them up or else, you know, the wind and the rain can actually make them fall. But, oh, they're just gorgeous. There's a liatris there. More spirea. That's a gold mound. This whole area is just growing in so well. I just didn't think it was going to grow this well. <laughs> I don't know why. I, that, I'm just surprised, but I'm very happy. This is a mellow yellow spirea. It's a, the leaf structure is a lot different than normal spireas, but really glows. And this spirea is called a little spark. It really stands out in the spring, and now it's getting these blooms on it that are gorgeous. So it's really put on a lot of growth. Right next to that, we have, I believe it's called Dark Towers Penstemon. These grow really tall. They're just starting to bloom here. In fact, I might end up having to move them more to the back of the bed as we make this bed go further back. But very easy plant. We have a lot of gold nine barks back here. This is one is one of my favorites. It's just done blooming, but just a couple weeks ago, this was covered in these white blooms. This one is called Festivus Gold Nine Bark. It gets about four by four. We have various things back here in the new bed, which I just did a video on. I'll link it above if you want to check that out. What we have blooming right here. Um, there's some scabiosa back there. I planted some dogwoods. This is a daisy may that's just starting to bloom. Now this will be covered in blooms. And I heard that it could bloom all season. So we'll see if you shear it back. We have a juga that's on its way out in front. Mostly burgundy glow and chocolate chip. This is a path I put in that's lined by hostas that goes to the back part of the property that we're going to keep more natural back there. My kaboom irises over here are just starting to bud. They'll be bloomed probably, they'll probably open in the next week. But isn't this gorgeous, this combination here? We have a sun king aurelia on the right that just pops from a mile away, and we have a blue halcyon hosta right next to it. I just, I love the blues next to the golds. It's just so eye catching. Uh, those sun king aurelias, Nothing bothers them. They like shade. Here's some Francis Williams hosta in the back. And then we have a false leaf lemon thread cypress or false cypress that'll grow four, four by four. It'll fill in that area. Some pen, more penstemon. More hosta. Sun King's in the far back. And this right here is Ivory Halo Dogwood. This is a plant I got on clearance. I would have never put it in otherwise, but I absolutely love it. It'll get four by four. The variegation on the leaves are gorgeous, and it has red twigs that look amazing in the fall. We have a lot of astilbe in this bed that haven't bloomed yet. They will, so that'll be kind of the show in the next few weeks here, usually beginning of July. We have a lot of Veronica over here that hasn't bloomed yet. We have some gold hosta. This is orange marmalade. This is second year. This was my last hosta to emerge. I almost thought it was dead. And we have a lot of mosquitoes back here. <laughs> this is gold Aztec creeping Veronica. I just put this in. I always look for gold uh, ground covers, so we'll see how that does. I'll report back on it in a few weeks. 
but as you can see, I have a lot of like taller variety of stobies and they love my yard because it stays kind of wet in few, a few areas. A stobies love water. Some of these will get as tall as me. You can see the sun kings in the back really popping. Here's a nepeta that I put in last year. A little laggy, but I'll probably share it back just to kind of, when it's done blooming, just to kind of make it a little more bushy. More astilbe. I think this is a Chinese type of astilbe. Um, I also have Mighty Pip back here that gets really tall. If you're looking for a large astilbe, try Mighty Pip. Very pretty. Pink flowers. And there's a Dancing Queen Hosta just to brighten up the area. First year, but it'll get bigger. There's a gold lamium. Trying that out. I just put it in, so. And here's my hosta bed over here. I will do a full hosta tour in like another month. I just want my hostas to grow in a bit before I do that. We have Montana in the front there that is gorgeous. Most of this is new, so. So my side yard here is just a winding path up we don't have a ton blooming right now but we have kind of like a rock garden area on the left and mostly hostas and shade plants over here on the right here is a pink dragon lamium i really thought that white foliage would brighten up the area i have it spotted throughout this bed we have some blue arrow junipers in here as well just we just wanted some more privacy from the neighbors more of that Tratoscanthia. Now in the shade, it looks more lime green foliage instead of gold. That's the sweet Kate. We have Liberty Hasta back there, one of my faves. Just to the left of it, the taller one is Seducer. And there's Designer Jeans. And just to the left of that, that blue one, that is Dancing with Dragons. That's one of my favorite ones I put in this year. I love the blue next to the gold. This is the little garden path. Leads up to my front yard there. And I just put in this little seating area. I got some hanging baskets I'm gonna hang. But nice to just sit back here and watch the garden, have a cup of coffee. So we're gonna have these quick fire hydrangeas on the right. They'll fill in to be about eight by eight, so. This bed is about three years old, so stuff still needs to grow in. We're in between bloom cycles. The lupin's just on its way out, and the yarrow's just about to start. Here's the yarrow here. It spreads. It's easy, but I do have to keep it sprayed from rabbits. And we have some Max Frey geranium that's just about to bloom. We have some more gold lamium in between the quick fire hydrangeas, and... The last bloom on the lupin this year. The rock garden to the left is just small. We have a lot of succulents and sedums, and the yellow you're seeing is scotch moss, which is actually a perennial, not a moss. More blue arrow juniper on the right. This is a saline. It's a good alpine rock garden type plant that could take poor soil, and this starts blooming now in mid-June, and it will seriously bloom all the way until frost. It's just starting to open, but very pretty white blooms on that, and it's really pretty next to that red semper vivum in the back. This side, we have a jade butterfly dwarf ginkgo. I got this for my birthday about two years ago. I love it. Gorgeous. It'll stay short. And we have some padilla irises or zebra irises that smell like grape soda. <laughs> and I paired that with some Atlantis sedum. I thought the foliages just go well together. Very easy plant there too. I might even put in more. I don't know. I might put some scabiosa over here as well. And we'll just go to my front. Here, this is my retaining wall. I just want to show you a couple things that are just starting to bloom. You cannot beat Dianthus this time of year. End of spring, early summer, and right before you start, have, start having to deadhead it, 
This is Fire Witch Dianthus. This is my absolute favorite. It's a couple years old here. It gets these, you know, pink magenta type blooms and the foliage is ice blue. I have three of these in this retaining wall. We have some purple pals hookra and this is Biocovo geranium. Very easy plant as well. Can take some shade. Nothing bothers it. It won't bloom like this all year, but It'll bloom for a good couple weeks and those little pink or little white blooms are so pretty. This is a hang basket I got for shade. It's fuchsia. They are heavy feeders, so they like fertilizer. Look at these blooms. They're just purple and that magenta color. It's just gorgeous. I got this for like $7 because it was half dead and I just brought it back to life. It really brightens up that area. So I'm trying to create a hedge over here with these Diablo 9 barks just to kind of hide in my neighbor's house. And it's blooming now. Isn't this gorgeous? Now these Diablo 9 barks can get huge. They can get like eight, 8 to 10 feet tall and wide. And we have my arbor here to the side yard with clematis growing up. It's just starting to bloom. I have two different ones. This is the first one here. So pretty. There's Jack Manii on this as well. Here's my my front porch this year. Now I just planted these pots so they're not filled in yet, but I'll show you. I have delphiniums. I think I counted like 18 spikes on these delphiniums this year, and it's only like fourth year. Look at that. I mean, just in another few weeks, it's really gonna pop. We have a clematis growing up the post that I planted last year. Just, op just first bloom opening there. That's a viticella type of clematis. We have some salosa and some Persian shield here. I always use Creeping Jenny as a spiller in my shade pots. The hanging basket up top is Dichondra Silver Falls and Dracula Calibracoa. And then, yeah, this pot here we have some tall papyrus king tut that will get six feet tall in the back there and it mostly has just like coleus we have some caladium in there and check out here we have this angel wings senecio it's actually in the artemisia family it's in a pot this is an annual in our area but doesn't that stand out just the white just really pops and here's my full sun container so far. Let me give you an update. Now I got a little crisp on these sweet potato vines, but we had some really, really hot weather for a bit. There's some euphorbia, and this is a banana plant here that will get eight feet tall. I cannot wait. It is doing great. It's loving it here. It's not crisp at all. We have some lantana that's supposed to fill in there. I kind of had to shear it back, so we'll get a rebloom. This is my side yard. I'm going to show you my front yard here. Um, I'll do more of a tour with the pasta tour, but let me just show you this one. This is one of my favorites, Autumn Frost. Really stands out from afar. We have ferns. We have sunken aurelia. We have a silby. We have... Creeping Jenny, we have geraniums, Jacob's Ladder, we got a lot back here. The Creeping Jenny is the ground cover just in front of, we have a couple foxgloves back here. I love foxgloves. Now the Creeping Jenny can get out of hand, so you got to only plant it where it could be contained. I just love fox gloves. They're, they're just gorgeous. Now in this front bed here, we have Wichita blue junipers in the back. We have a variegated Jacob's ladder here that's just starting to bloom. Isn't that a cool leaf color? Like, I just love it. It's doing pretty good in the shade too. Just starting to bloom. We have some more Biocovo geranium here. A 
We have Silver Mound Artemisia in the front. Those are those Silver Mounds there. We have Millennium Allium just behind that. Those The Millennium Allium blooms uh, mid-August here in Zone 4. We have Crab Apples that already bloomed. Silver Mound really pops. <laughs> This is a very dry garden bed. I have a lot of allium bulbs here that are just starting to fizzle out, but they really did put on a show. And it was just so hot this year. They fizzled out really quick. These are atlas alliums that are just in front of, isn't this a glorious plant? It almost looks like a rose bush from afar, but this is a snow white mock orange that will get six feet tall. This is a really low maintenance plant and I'm just so surprised how well it's doing in this dry area. I don't water a ton up here, I try, but isn't this glorious? Like it's just covered in blooms. It's like third year up here, no second year. And it smells amazing. So I highly recommend mock oranges. We have this Sonic Bloom Wygela. This will get four by four, it's still new. Just kind of on its way out, but it'll get another bloom cycle after that. Some, some of those uh, shorter Ostara alliums in the front. They're done blooming, but they're still pretty. And we have a Potentilla here that's just starting to bloom. Potentillas will bloom like all season once they start. So, and they could take some dry conditions. And one thing I do want to show you, this bed really, like if you could look far back, there's a gold, golden spirit smoke bush that really pops. I'll kind of come close to that. Let me show you. I did, there's this um, cat mint here. This is Junior Walker cat mint. Just, and just in front of that is Valerie Finnis Artemisia. This will get yellow flowers. First year for that. So I'm really excited to see what happens. But doesn't this smoke bush really just look great next to those Wichita blue junipers? This can take some dry conditions. It could get up to six feet tall and wide, and it is just gorgeous. Very happy with that plant. And I actually put another one in next to it, but it's still really small. Another cat mint here. They're good fillers. And let me show you this um, sedum just behind that. Some of it's starting to bloom. This was a sedum mix that I got from like Home Depot. And I just kind of put it in front of this tree because it got really hot afternoon sun, sandy soil. But look at the, the different types are blooming. This is done amazing in front of this tree. It's a great weed barrier. Like it, it's, I've been so happy with it. You don't have to do anything with it. It'll spread. And not aggressively. All right. And last but not least, there's one container I forgot to show you earlier. This is one of my shade containers, and I love it. So we have Bloodleaf Irisine. That is the pink plant in there with the hot pink stems. So cool. We have Creeping Jenny as a trailer. And we have um, some Coleus and some Sun Patients in there. Some tropical compact sun patients so the coleus will grow in there but it is just gorgeous and it has grown a lot i can't wait to see this pot fill in but thank you guys so much for watching i hope you like that and happy gardening everyone take care